Hi everyone coming in. We're just gonna give everybody else a couple seconds uh, to sign in and then we'll go ahead and get started with the webinar. Welcome everyone. Welcome back, we hope. Yeah, so hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar, The Role of Explicit Foundational Skills in the Science of Reading. Before we get started, I want to remind you that this is being recorded and it will be sent out to all registrants about 24 hours after the webinar ends. Please submit any questions you have in the Q&A box along uh, in your toolbar along the bottom of your screen. And if we have time, we'll get to them at the end. Closed captioning is also available by clicking on live transcript in the toolbar along the bottom of your screen. And uh, you will have closed captioning that way. All right, Karen and Megan, take it away. Perfect. All right. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us and thanks for coming back. We hope and we see people are already typing in where they're coming from in the chat. So you're very accustomed to the process. We appreciate that. Absolutely. It's like we know what to do in this virtual environment, Karen. Exactly. So welcome. So we're going to, well, our images are there. We're going to give you a second. So as people are still joining, I know there are still people joining. We're going to give it another 30 seconds or so, Megan. Sounds great. We have people from all over joining us today, and it's such an honor to be here with uh, so many educators from across the country. Um, I don't know. Have Oh, we even have someone from Australia joining us. Canada. Canada, Papa, Idaho, Delaware, yeah. San Jose. I love it. Ireland, Texas, Florida. And they keep coming. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll go ahead and introduce myself while we uh, are waiting on the rest of our friends to join. Um, my name is Megan Mobear, and I am actually a former elementary teacher from the great state of Louisiana. Uh, the majority of the time uh, that I spent in the classroom was actually in pre-K through second grade. And so when we think about these years, these are foundational years that are really crucial and super impactful on students reading success down the road. Um, it was actually through my experience with teaching reading in the classroom uh, through implementing Amplify CKLA that really allowed me that opportunity to put the science of reading into action in my classroom and also to continue to learn about that. Um, and from there, I started working with educators across the country who were doing the same thing. And it was such a pleasure to, to really get to know the program very intimately. Um, and now I get to join Karen uh, with uh, in presentations like this to, to spread the good news, not only about the science of reading, but also about how Amplify has instructional materials that help uh, educators uh, bring the science of reading to life into their classrooms. So I'm and, excited to be here. And I'm excited to be with Megan today. And I just a little bit about my background. I was a first grade teacher, fifth grade, middle school language arts, pre-service teachers. But the best transition I made was uh, coming to Amplify and really getting to work with teachers, implementing uh, high quality instructional materials in their classroom. And I get to meet people, lots of people like Megan, and I get to work with Megan all the time. So that's why this has been phenomenal. And share with all of you who join us to learn more about CKLA and the science of reading. And so today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to give a little bit of an overview. You know, we know people, this is a series of sessions. And so we know some people have already joined for the past couple. So we're going to really quickly go over the science of reading. But today is really all about CKLA foundational skills. And the neat thing is, after we talk a little bit about that, we're going to have some special guests share their experiences. Uh, so you'll get to ask them some questions. And we're excited about that. And then we're going to share, you will, will actually take some questions from you to share with them. Uh, and then we're going to talk about some resources that you will have to um, access to after the webinar. Yeah. And Karen, we couldn't be more excited to have these guests and also share resources at the end of today's session. But we're actually going to hear from two CKLA teachers who have experienced the power of Amplify CKLA foundational skills program. And, um, you know, as a former educator myself and uh, 
you know, one of the best ways to really get insight is to, if, if a program's a good fit for you um, and your students and your districts and your schools, uh, is to hear from, uh, from teachers themselves, right? They've spent every day in the trenches with a new program. They've made the shift. And there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, challenges, but also successes that we love to hear about. Um, and so we'll go to this poll, right? Uh, I know that we can kind of all relate to this and meeting with teachers and Karen, I see you smiling and kind of nodding your head. Uh, when we think about our experience coming out of college, what did you feel was, um, you know, the, what, what was your, how well prepared for teaching reading were you? And so we'll let you guys go ahead and answer. Um, and, you know, if you feel like you came out of college thinking, what are foundational skills, then you would select a one. If you feel like or if you were trained under uh, Louisa Motes, then you would select 10 because obviously you would be prepared to uh, really put best practices and, and science-based instruction into your classroom. Karen, so what's what your experience like? So, well, and I, you know, I was trained in language. And so I, I might've gone to the lower end of that uh, scale there. So we're excited to hear from you, but we also know just from talking to teachers in the field and, you know, what Megan and I have done with professional development, that there is quite a range of experiences in terms of your collegiate training. And so we're excited to see, maybe we're excited to see, maybe we're scared to see the results. I would have definitely been on the lower range myself. I came out of college feeling like I was ready to teach math. I didn't know how to teach reading though. Um, and so it's, it's definitely been a process. So let's see our results now. As they're coming in. All right. So it wow. is on the lower end. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like, you know, we can relate and have a lot in common with the majority of participants who answered that poll, Karen. So that's typically how it goes. And that's okay. And we're here to, to make that shift, help, help you make that shift. Yeah, absolutely. And something we, uh, you know, when, when looking at, hey, why do we even need to make a shift, right? And, and how that relates to foundational skills instruction. Um, you know, normally, Karen, you and I, we start out with data right? And we might go into uh, research. And, and, and I, I can't remember if it was last week or, or not, if I shared this, but this is some common research. For, we'll call this the first grade dilemma. Um, if you're looking at this group of first graders, thinking about foundational skills and how important first grade is for, for kiddos who are learning how to read, imagine these are 50 first graders who have gotten off on the wrong foot. They've had a really rocky start to learning how to read. And so, um, you know, when we think about these kiddos, I'm sure most of you can relate. What do we end up doing with them when they've had a rocky start to learning how to read? Well, we turn to intervention as the solution to catch them back up. And when we do that, we think, okay, with all this really hard work we do, uh, we're gonna catch these kids back up. But in all reality, uh, what ends up happening is 44 out of these 50 first graders who were already not on the right path for reading proficiency will actually remain at risk for reading failure uh, post first grade and well into middle school. And so when we think about our job as early educators, early childhood educators, those foundational years, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, these years are crucial to develop proficient reader, you know, when it, when it comes to developing proficient readers. We all want what's best for kids, right? But obviously nationally, we, uh, there's gonna need to, you know, we're gonna need to make a shift with that. And so, whenever we think about science-based reading instruction, it is a matter of prevention. We don't want this to happen. And it takes a strong, explicit, systematic uh, foundational skills program to really turn this trajectory around. And so, you know, thinking about science-based reading instruction, this whole webinar series that you guys have signed up for, um, that's what we are diving into. And so last time, we, if you attended last week, we did talk about the simple view of reading. Philip Goff and William Tunder's work around the competencies that kiddos need to become proficient readers. And so we'll just remind you that word recognition, as we look at uh, Hollis Scarborough's row, uh, the word recognition and the language comprehension 
Both of those things are equally as important in terms of what kiddos need. And so as we explored that last week, we looked at that language comprehension side and what a knowledge rich curriculum uh, entails. And we gave you some, some, some look fors and we talked about what that looks like in CKLA. And I did the knowledge rich curriculum side of the rope and Megan looked at the explicit systematic phonics uh, instruction. Absolutely. And as we kind of unpacked the word recognition side of things and identified these key characteristics of what explicit systematic foundational skills instruction should entail, uh, we actually started out by kind of um, really looking into, hey, what is word recognition? What are, what's the ultimate goal here? You know, and thinking back to the brain, our brains not being naturally wired to learn how to read, when we think about foundational skills and word recognition, what we're really doing is building or developing those competencies that are the nuts and bolts to early literacy um, so that students can actually connect speech sounds to print, right? And the ultimate goal is decoding and decoding uh, without any effort, right? And that's what really allows for comprehension. And when we looked at word recognition, we talked about how, um, you know, in, in the brain and our brain's not naturally being wired to read, what, what we're doing is, is developing those pathways, that's, that switchboard that enables reading, right? That connects the vision center to the speech center um, and, and it's called the visual word form area, but basically if you have it, you can read, if you don't, you cannot. So when thinking about those foundational years, the ultimate goal is to develop those pathways that connect the vision center to, uh, the speech center, connecting speech to print so that we can actually decode words and have enough room or energy left in the brain for comprehension, but it takes a strong, explicit, systematic approach to teaching foundational skills to do that. And so some of you may be here because you've done your research and looked at ed reports. Um, CKLA skills was that first foundational skills program rated all green. And so we're very proud of that. And so today we're digging in thoroughly to the skills portion of the CKLA curriculum. Absolutely. And in fact, you know, in thinking about CKLA and our comprehensive curriculum, our comprehensive kindergarten through fifth grade program uh, that does place an equal emphasis on both, you know, foundational skills and language comprehension. Uh, yes, it has an all green rating on ed reports. And we take a two strand approach because of what, uh, thinking back to the reading rope, what that um, approach to teaching, you know, beginning learners how to read, what that looks like. But today, as Karen mentioned, is all about the foundational skill strand that has been given that all green rating. Um, and that is gonna develop those word recognition competencies as identified in Scarborough's reading rope. Um, and so we're gonna do that in, in a very explicit systematic way uh, that's been proven to be effective. And so, you know, for our kindergarten teachers on the call, you know, it's all about phonological awareness. We're going to start with those early skills, making sure kids are hearing those sounds and words so we can develop that to the more challenging skill of phonemic awareness, the isolation of those sounds, the manipulation of those sounds. But in CKLA, we then advance to that basic code where we're gonna teach that in kindergarten, the most, the most common or least ambiguous sound spelling patterns. But by the end of second grade, students will have been taught all 150 sound spelling patterns for those 44 sounds. Yeah, and Karen, that's such a key look for. Does your curriculum, you know, explicitly teach all 150 sound spellings for the 44 sounds during those K to two years? Exactly. And so how do we do that? You know, we're going to start, it's all about orthographic mapping. It's about mapping those sounds to letters, getting kids practicing that. They're going to be reading regularly connected text, that decodable reader. They're going to be writing because that's what we know. It's not just about reading. We want students writing about that content and stories they're reading in those rich decodable texts throughout that K to two experience. Absolutely. And so when we think about um, high quality instructional materials, you know, we can learn about the science of reading and really build capacity for you know, brain science and what that instruct, what instruction should entail. But oftentimes as teachers, it's hard to find high quality instructional materials that really make 
uh, this achievable, right? Bringing that uh, new learning um, to life in your classroom. But with Amplify CKLA's foundational skill strand, uh, it really sets you guys, uh, sets educators up for success. I can speak to this from experience. I'm a former CKLA teacher. And one of the first things you look at when you open up a lesson are primary focus objectives. This really sets the stage and identifies the goals um, and objectives for your students throughout, throughout the lesson. But these are standards-based objectives. So this is driving your core, your, your foundational skills instruction. And so when thinking about those K to two years, it's impaired, it's crucial that we constantly check the pulse on where students are and mastering uh, these standards-based objectives or making progress towards that. So you have daily formative assessment opportunities specifically for that. Now, when we think about phonological and phonemic awareness skills, these, these foundational skills that are really going to set the stage for students' uh, decoding ability and fluent reading throughout you know, their lives, um, it does start with phonemic awareness. And all of NCKLA in kindergarten, we really move slow to go fast. So we're going to actually start with teaching kids how to orally blend and segment words. And we're gonna use car, you know, blending picture cards and kinesthetic motions to teach this. After all, blending you know, is, is what underlies the ability to, to decode words and segmenting is actually what enables um, spelling or encoding. And so we're going to teach these in tandem. This is all done orally. So, you know, students are, are blending sounds like k, a, t, hat, or we're giving them the number of sounds and they're segmenting those. And this is all done orally before we're going to actually connect those sounds to print. So you will see those phonological and phonemic awareness activities actually spiral throughout kindergarten and first grade. But as instruction shifts to phonics, this is what it kind of sounds like. We're gonna take a sounds first approach because research shows that foundational reading instruction that starts with sounds actually benefits the greatest number of students. That's what we all want. And so as a CKLA teacher, you're actually using your instructional roadmap to help introduce a new sound, which sounds something like, uh, boys and girls, today we're going to learn a new sound. Uh, we're going to learn the er sound. Can you say the er sound? And students are going to repeat the er sound after you. As a former kindergarten first grade teacher, um, they're you know my kiddos would we'd say it in a monster voice and a mouse voice. We'd say it in a smart first grade voice. Um, but they're going to be you know they're going to be participating in just hearing that sound and repeating it as well as words that contain the er sound. From there, the next activity, and this is a first grade lesson, by the way, this is just kind of giving you guys an idea of how a lesson flows. Uh, from there, though, we're going to actually shift down to the phoneme level. Um, so we're going to, in this example, this is sound riddles. So we're going to give students a riddle, and they're going to provide the answer that has the er sound in the word. So they're really having to identify words that contain the er sound. But for a child who gives you a word out of left field, like uh, the word red, as a teacher, given that this is all oral, uh, that child obviously can't hear the er sound. So I know I'm going to have to provide them more support, especially once I connect this to print. Now, maybe they just need more opportunities to hear it, to actually hear the sound. So CKLA actually has a digital student hub that provides them additional opportunities to hear that new sound that they're learning. So students can go to their sound library and listen to uh, fun, catchy songs to hear the sound again. And I'll let you guys take a look. Uh, many, many kiddos love to, to dance along. Um, so there you go, your kiddos, I know my kiddos love songs, uh, and especially during those K to two years, and this is just that additional opportunity, that multi-sensory approach. <laughs> Where they get to listen to that song again. Now, from there, it's going to be time to crack the code here. So, as a teacher, we've you know introduced the sound. Uh, students have you know heard and repeated that sound in words. Um, we've identified words containing the er sound, uh, and now I'm going to connect it to print here. And so, 
CKLA's instructional roadmap actually gives you um, guidance for, for actually forming the letters in each sound. So the handwriting uh, instruction is actually kinetic, connected to the phonics scope and sequence here. So you're gonna explicitly model that as the teacher. Um, and then students are gonna take pencil to paper and practice reading and writing the sounds in words as they develop fine motor skills and handwriting fluency in their student activity books. So as a teacher, you also get to receive feedback. So for example, that first opportunity or that first page, I'm actually modeling along with my kiddos. Um, I'm making the sound as we're writing it, saying the handwriting strokes. Um, and then from there, that back page on the activity actually is that first time that students can apply it uh, when uh, you know connecting it to, to, to text or to paper. And so um, you know, this is that opportunity for feedback. For my honor above level students, they're gonna do this independently. Uh, but for my, my kiddo who gave me the word red during sound riddles, they need more support. And so CKLA's instruction actually allows you to make those grouping decisions, those small group decisions to say, hey, I'm gonna provide this child who's struggling with reading skills. Um, I'm gonna work in a small group setting with them and to provide them the support and scaffolding that they need. And so this is just one of the many opportunities in CKLA to really differentiate your instruction and provide that additional support. Now in your classroom kits in CKLA's foundational skills program, there are a variety of resources, of visual resources to help support your phonics instruction, such as sound posters in kindergarten, vowel and consonant code flip books in first and second grade, and individual code charts for first and second graders as well. And so many times, you know, you think about a kid who's like raising their hand, Miss Venditti, how do I spell? And as a teacher, you're like, tell me the sounds you hear. All right, well, let's look in your individual code chart. And this is that resource to support that. So from there though, we wanna make Tiger. sure that, that students have additional visual and auditory er, practice opportunities. Tiger. So they actually get to watch interactive videos er, on their digital Tiger. student hub, whether it's in the classroom, at home, Let's say it together. Uh, during remediation time, um, to really fine tune their articulation er. as they join in with other children. And so this is just another opportunity for, to, for them to hear the sound, uh, er. uh, make the sound and then connect it to print. But as Karen talked about, it's all about orthographic mapping. Uh, we know what you know. Science-based reading tells us is, or science science tells us is that mapping sounds to letters is a really crucial component that kids need to develop into a skilled decoder and a fluent reader. And so, in C CKLA's foundational skills program, you'll see engaging activities like chaining. Uh, this is one of those many deliberate practice opportunities where students are actually building and reading words as they're learning those sounds. And so they're gonna do that and they're gonna start with that in kindergarten with some chaining folders. And you can probably see things around me. I have my chaining folders and big books and, and the flip books, but all of those are gonna help students build their skills organically. Yeah, absolutely. This is such a powerful tool. So I know as a kindergarten teacher, it was always kind of like letter of the day, letter of the week instruction. We teach the whole alphabet and all the sounds. Um, but as students are actually learning new sounds in kindergarten, they're actually working with building and reading those words. So for example, you're teaching the diagraph and students are uh, changing at to that. And this is really that, that engaging uh, tactile experience to, to develop those pathways in the brain. But it is all about bringing it all together and applying all of those foundational skills to build fluency. And so CKLA students actually do this in their connected texts that are 100% decodable, which means that they're never asked to use like unreliable reading strategies or apply skills they haven't been explicitly taught. Uh, this makes all learners really feel successful. And not only does it help your students uh, to, to see themselves as readers and feel successful and build self-advocacy, but it really does make your phonics instruction meaningful. This is tying it all together. So as we go into first, or kindergarten, you're seeing on the, on the page, Kit, that's our first book that kids are going to experience. And we're gonna make sure they're very successful. They're gonna be prepared with all of those sound spelling patterns so that when they get into that text, they feel so confident and comfortable reading. But by the end of, of kindergarten, our K teachers are so excited to see kiddos reading paragraphs with advanced punctuation and that more challenging text by the end of K. 
As we move into first grade, though, you're going to start out with Beth. And notice the text takes a little bit of a, a backward step because we're going to review in the beginning of first grade. We're going to make sure kids are coming back acclimated to the school setting. So we're going to review what happens in kindergarten. And then by the end of first grade, look at where we're going to Kay and Martez. And Martez goes on a trip to Mexico. So not only are kids learning to read in K-2, they are reading to learn in these wonderful rich decodable texts. Because when you get to second grade again, we take a little step back because we're reviewing in that beginning of second grade with the cat bandit and the kids love the cat bandit. Um, he's a little trickster, but by the end of second grade, our third, fourth and fifth grade teachers are so appreciative because their kiddos have been prepared with reading informational texts like the War of 1812 with about the Star Spangled Banner and uh, Dolly Madison, some history, which is really great in those decodables. Yeah. And, you know, Karen, I will say we talked about this earlier. Second grade teachers, whenever they look at the War of 1812 in Unit 6, oftentimes they're astonished, right? And thinking about, can our kiddos really do this? Well, these are on-level text, right? We're using on-level instruction uh, and, and students are, are having access to this grade level text to apply all of that awesome foundational skills instruction you've just provided. But the War of 1812 is actually uh, wrapping up all of those sound spellings, all of those foundational skills that uh, you guys as kindergarten, first and second grade teachers have worked so hard to, to teach them. But it's also, like you said, bridging that learning to read, reading to learn. Um, students actually in second grade in our, in our uh, knowledge strand learn about the War of 1812 prior to this as well. So whether or not you're using CKLA's foundational skills program um, with, uh, in addition to whatever you're doing to build knowledge in the classroom, or if you're using our whole program, uh, it's gonna bring everything together to make sure they're ready for third grade. But you know, when we look at CKLA student readers, um, they're extremely unique in the fact that students actually, all of these texts are in chapter book format. So students get to follow diverse characters across various adventures uh, to learn about, um, you know, through each chapter. And so in Greenfern Zoo, they actually meet Vern in the first chapter. And Vern is going to take them on across the Greenfern Zoo to learn about chimps, reef sharks, puffer fins, trout fish, all kinds of incredible animals. But it's really about making, giving them that opportunity to master those skills you've explicitly taught up until that point. But what you'll notice in our on-level connected text, a key indicator of science-based reading instruction and explicit systematic foundational skills instruction is that we um, not only provide students with the opportunity to, to apply these skills, but we're gonna provide them support as well. So you see that the new sound spellings are gonna be bolded. Um, and, and you know when thinking about those kids who need more support, uh, as the teacher in the classroom, this is your opportunity to work in a small group setting with those kids who do need more support, or maybe it is um, working, you know, your honor above level kids or partner reading or reading in small groups, or maybe it's that you wanna hear your um, you know, on-level kids read, all of our readers are actually accessible on that digital hub that you guys saw the videos on. And students can access these texts in e-reader or audiobook format. So if you're listening to on or above grade level kids, your below level kids can actually listen to these texts being read to them by a professional narrator and follow along. So CKLA does, CKLA's foundational skills program really provides all of the tools that you need to make this um, you know, grade level instruction achievable uh, from the materials perspective, but also from the instruction and, and students practicing and applying those skills as well. And so once they read about that, we want them writing about it. We want to ask them questions about that. Because remember, it's not about decoding for decoding's sake. It's really about decoding for comprehension's sake. And so you see, we're going to ask them questions and ask for text-based evidence. We ask them to go back into the reader to find what page. And you're also noticing those scaffolds that Megan mentioned are part of the activity book pages as well. So we're going to ask them about those animals they read. But once they've shared what they know about these animals, we're going to ask them to write a little bit of a lengthier piece. And we're going to support teachers in writing that lengthier piece. And so as we move to that, you know, name of the critter, I hope you noticed that too, because we're providing that ER spelling for that ER sound because it applies to that text. And we're gonna support teachers with all those tools like checklists and rubrics that's gonna guide them and their kiddos in that writing process. Yeah, and Karen, you know, in thinking about being a foundational skills, 
you know, we're really starting out at the sentence level here. This is where that explicit instruction starts out at the sentence level. So like you said, they can develop these lengthier pieces. And, and um, one thing, you know, in writing about that connected text, it really is a matter of equity. Oftentimes in early years, we rely on students' life experiences when we're teaching that formal writing process. And here we're actually using that connected text um, for them to all, you know, they're all in that same topic and here they're actually going through that formal writing process and it truly is amazing to see uh, how effective that is. Now, when you have kiddos and we all have them, right, who just don't master those skills the first time around, sometimes it just takes a few additional at bats. Um, they need more, in, you know, uh, engagement or um, opportunities with uh, developing those skills. So at the end of every foundational skills lesson, there is actually an additional support component that you as the teacher have, you know, you have access to game boards and progress monitoring probes uh, that just measure the sound spellings you're teaching that week. This is such a helpful piece as a teacher to make sure that your remediation instruction is aligning with your core instruction. And it's all right there for you, all at, right at point of use. And so after we do all of that wonderful instruction and kids are applying their skills, we want to know how, how are they doing? So we do have those end of unit assessments. And so it, it may be a little bit different in CKLA. We are not story of the week. We're really all about application of skills. We want to know, can they take what we've been teaching and apply it to a, a new read? And so they're going to read Amber. ER, the bat, and we're going to ask them questions because again, it's about comprehension. We're going to ask them questions and we're also going to assess whatever grammar skills or convention skills, whatever we're, we've taught in that unit, we're going to assess them on. Those benchmark assessments are there for teachers as well because that helps teachers monitor the growth of students, provide you know, a baseline for their instruction in moving forward, ensuring kiddos are advancing towards grade level objectives. And then I do know the question will come up and I think our, our guests, our special guests will be able to talk about this more, but what if my kids don't get it? Even when Megan talked about those, those additional supports, we do have an intervention toolkit that helps you to assess that need and a plan and teach right on the teacher resource site. You have access to all of those resources if your kiddos need extra. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when districts make the shift or when schools make the shift to explicit systematic foundational skills um, uh, instruction using uh, CKLA's foundational skills strand, um, you know, these are the results they're seeing. And finally, their RTI triangles are right side up. This is the goal for everyone. And as we touched on in the beginning, it's a matter of prevention, right? We don't want to have an intervention problem. And that starts out uh, with making sure that our foundational skills instruction, you know, that's only half of the equation, um, is really grounded in, in science. And so last week, we actually shared our science of reading, making the shift uh, toolkit, or, and, and this, this is an ebook format. And really when looking at classroom instruction, whether it's your current instruction, whether it's, you know, you looking at a foundational skills program, are you know, you know, evaluating maybe a program that you just adopted and kind of having to you know add in some additional pieces. Um, we actually have tools that help you identify you know does this phonological awareness um, you know is it, that's included in this uh, program is this instruction really meeting um, all of those necessary elements that science based uh, research calls for so. Are there multiple opportunities for students to engage in sound and word play? Does the program use a sounds first approach? All, you know, are all 150 sound spellings for the 44 sounds gonna be explicitly taught? And also are decoding and encoding taught in tandem? And do students have those deliberate practice opportunities with connected text? And, you know, really being taught that blending is the way that we decode words. And so, Amplify CKLA's foundational skills program meets all of these necessary elements that, that it takes to really turn the student's trajectory around. But we can sit here, Karen and I, and we can talk to you guys all day long about this. We're very passionate about the program from the personal experiences we've had with it. But the best way to really learn about a program 
is to hear from teachers using it. And so today we are so blessed and so fortunate to have um, you know, some, some key educators who are second grade teachers from New Glarus, Wisconsin, who are gonna speak to um, their, their uh, experience through implementing a foundational skills program and what that shift looked like and what those successes and challenges were actually like. And so I'd like to welcome um, Jody and Michelle who are joining us. Um, you know, guys, they've actually had a full day in the classroom today. Um, and so we're actually gonna let them introduce themselves and we're gonna ask a few questions and open up the floor to you guys as well. So Jody and Michelle, if you wanna introduce yourself and, and what your, your background is, we'd love to hear from you. All right, uh, my name is Michelle Arnett. I have taught 4K kindergarten, first, second, and third grade in my career. This is my 21st year. Um, I was also early on in my career trained in reading recovery and so have done several years of that program as well um, and have taught second grade CKLA. This is my third year. And I'm Jody McGraw and uh, this is my 17th year teaching and uh, I have taught, let's see, third grade, 4K, uh, first, grade. first grade and second grade. I currently teach second grade. Um, and five years ago, four years ago, four. I piloted CKLA for our school for second grade. And then after a year of teaching, well, shortly after starting CKLA, we decided as a district to um, that everybody at our elementary school would do CKLA. So. so that's really exciting. I have to ask a question. <laughs> One question just popped out uh, as Michelle was talking because I am a former reading recovery teacher as well. And so, and I know Megan, we have so many conversations with people across the country who are trying to make a shift from that guided reading, those leveled readers to more of a structured literacy program. And so maybe both of you can speak to that to kind of start us off on that conversation because people on the call are, making that shift as well. And so how do we help people? And, and what was your journey like in making that shift? Uh, well, for me, reading recovery was great, but it's also very intensive um, development to be able to do reading recovery well and be able to choose books that are appropriate for children. I had very intensive instruction on how to do that. As a first year teacher saying, here's a whole bunch of books put some kids together in a group and teach them guided reading, I, I was a little bit at a loss. I, I learned a lot through reading recovery. CKLA makes you a reading teacher, whether you are one or not. And I think that's what our district was looking for is it didn't matter what classroom our second graders were in, they were gonna get a strong reading teacher because we had a strong reading program. And so if you haven't had the background like I have in, in reading recovery or you're a first year teacher, you have a solid reading program to get started and your kids aren't going to be behind because you're a first grade, you know, first year teacher, or you haven't had that same um, instruction that say I have had, your kids are still going to benefit from a really strong reading program. And I, small group is great. We did a lot of small group. The problem is what are the other kids doing while I'm on small group? And that's very difficult for kindergartners, first graders and second graders, because there's not a lot of independent things that they can be doing for 45 minutes to an hour while I'm working with a small group. And we struggled with that for years. Not a lot of things that have value <laughs> um, that they can do independently. Yeah, so on our schedule, we'd have an hour and a half of reading because I'd have three groups at a half hour, but really they were only getting a half hour of reading instruction because the other hour they were just sitting there while I was working with the other kids. Those are some great, that's great information to have. And I know our teachers are thinking about that. And I think that's another question that comes up with CKLA when we talk about whole group versus small group and how does that change in terms of that skill-based instruction. So, and I know Megan has, has things to add to this as well. And so I don't wanna dominate these questions. So listen, Karen and I, when we end these calls, whenever we have panelists or CKLA teachers, we are so excited to just kind of debrief about what you guys share. And the thing that stood out the most to me about what you just said was that CKLA makes every teacher a reading teacher. Yeah. And that is exactly what um, I experienced in, in, in the classroom. Uh, you know, at the beginning of this, we shared 
uh, what was your practicum experience like? Did it prepare you to teach reading? And I didn't come out feeling prepared. I know many teachers who we talk to on, on, on calls, on presentations, say the exact same thing. And so what a powerful statement to, to have a program that is really going to make you a reading teacher um, and, and level the playing field. When we talk about kids having instructional materials, yes, it is absolutely a matter of equity, right? Do they have access to on-level text? All of these things. But when it comes to the classroom teacher, it's also a matter of equity as well. We want to ensure that kiddos are receiving the same high quality instruction in every classroom within our building. And that is exactly what CKLA does provide reassurance on. Um, and so that was, when you said that I got, actually got chill bumps and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm jumping out of my skin right now. Um, and so, yeah, as Karen talked about the whole group, the small group, you guys talked a lot about that. And that's something that we do hear from teachers is, hey, where's the small group instruction in CKLA? Does this mean that we're gonna be teaching in a whole group setting throughout the 60 minute foundational skills block? And the, simp the short answer is no, right? And so if you guys could really hone in on that, we'd love to hear more about that. Oh, well, I guess we do it several different ways. One, CKLA already has a built-in saying, hey, if group one can handle this sheet on their own, let those kids do it. You grab your group two kids, move them to a small table and do it together. So CKLA has that built in there to go, oh yeah, that's right, I can do this in, in multiple ways. Um, we do a lot of partner reading. Um, I have been able to, like this year I have a student that's borderline non-reader. So I've been actually been able to be his partner while my other kids are reading. And we've been doing some of his tier two instruction during the reading block, because that's when it makes sense. He can't read all of the text in our readers. So we read the first paragraph or page together. And then we flip gears and we work on things that he needs. Um, so he's still getting second grade instruction. He's still reading second grade text, but then I'm also able to fill those holes while all my other kids are working on second grade material and they're not losing out and he's not losing out. So it gives me that flexibility to do that. Um, and then we have our, we have tier two time built in later in the day. And so we can, we use the assessments after every unit. We've picked what are our essential learning targets. If a child doesn't meet that essential learning target, that's then what we use for tier two. And then Amplify has all sorts of, I mean, they almost have more than you need for resources. I think the like remediation when we first opened it was like 1100 pages. I mean, there, if you can't find something to do through Amplify, then you're not looking for it. Cause there's, there's a ton of um, stuff out there to remediate what you're working on. Um, we also have access to like first grade and kindergarten readers. If we needed to go back and do things like that, we, we have access to that. And of course the website gives you access to all grade level material. So when I log in, I don't just have second grade material. If it's something that was delivered in first grade and it's a skill we need to work on, I can always go back to first grade and look up those skills. In fact, we just did that <laughs> while you were um, speaking before when you had the first grade reader up and we were talking about where they do text-based evidence. We we're like, oh, I wonder where they start that. So on a different computer, we were looking at first grade going, oh, yep, lesson 13 is where they start. Um, the other piece I really enjoy about it is that the skills are broken down so much in my materials that I know as I'm teaching, these three kids definitely need to work on the foundational skill of say the EA sound. They may not need that uh, specific intervention when we go to read. So I can put this group of six into a foundational skills vowel sound group. And I know that this six need a reading intervention where we're working on fluency or reading or pulling information out of text. So it's really, I feel like I'm assessing them the, the whole time I'm teaching so that I know exactly what they need and when they need it and what to do about it. Because a lot of times we were, we were getting really good at identifying that our kids didn't have a specific skill, but we didn't know what to do next. <laughs> like, uh, and isn't it great to like rest your head on the pillow at night knowing that <laughs> what you are doing to target that deficit or that deficiency is actually aligning to what you're doing in the core, like mm -hmm. using the same pedagogical approach. I know that is one thing. It's like, oh, I'm doing what's best for kids today. Yes. And I'm not reinventing the wheel. Like I know what I'm gonna to do today and then I know what I'm going to do with them tomorrow to further that skill and that intervention. So um, 
yeah, just that, that, that entire sequence of like, I know what I did with them yesterday. I know what I did with them today. And I know what I'm going to do with them tomorrow. Which was a real lifeline when we went to virtual last year. CKLA was, was, it was fantastic to have that. And if they, what we, we knew what they missed in first grade, we had those opportunities to go back and review those because we knew what they missed. Having had a curriculum that we didn't have, I've had to invent, virtual school would have been a complete Mess. nightmare. <laughs> so it was very, very nice to, um, to have CKLA last year when we were virtual. Yeah, Michelle, you you hit the nail on the head. We actually, who were we interviewing, Karen, on the podcast? Was it Pam Snow or uh, that she actually talked about virtual learning and how an explicit systematic approach uh, for remote learning is what has kept educators afloat. But you know, whether you're virtual or not, think about the time you guys in the past have spent in the classroom, especially the, that first half of the year, trying to yep. figure out what do my kids know? What do they not know, right? And it mm-hmm. goes back to exactly what you just said. I know exact that my kiddos in my classroom were coming to me, all having received that same grade level skills instruction, um, using the same sounds first approach, were used to the routines, all of the things, but I knew what sound spellings they had been taught already. There was, it wasn't a guessing game based off of the teacher they had. Um, right. And so that saves you so much time as well. And when we went virtual, we were figuratively and literally, literally and figuratively on the same page. Yeah. Um, like when we had to restructure how school looked and how it works, we didn't have to start way back at square one. Yeah. We hit the ground running because we were actually on the same page as a team so that we could deliver that curriculum to our kids. So like if you walked into our building today, you would have seen all of us teaching lesson six of skill six in all four second grade classrooms. There's nobody on a different page. Nobody's going rogue. We're all staying together. That way when we assess them at the end, we can come together and compare what our kiddos did and where did they go well, where did things go well and where they didn't go well because we're all doing the same thing. Nobody's creating, oh, I think this is more important, so I'm gonna go this way. I'm this is more important, so I'm going this way, or I don't like teaching this, I'm gonna skip this and we're gonna move on to this. It doesn't happen here. We've taught every skill, every lesson and on the same day so that we can have those conversations about what our kids are doing. We don't have to spend time on what we're teaching. That's done for us. Now we can do the next step of what don't they know? How do we know they don't know it? And now what are we going to do when they don't know it? Um, and so that's taken CKL is letting us have those conversations and we're not spending an hour just planning what we're doing next week because it's already there for us. Yeah, that is fantastic to think about the formative assessment that guides all of your instruction, as well as, you know, you're hitting on a point of equity, that everyone is getting that instruction. And I think something else that comes up, and maybe both of you, Michelle, Jody, you can talk to that, that question of what about my kids that get it pretty quickly? What about my kids that, you know, how do I enrich? How do I keep kids moving forward faster? And so can you speak a little bit to that? Because we get that question a lot as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I guess it's just like we've done with anything else. Um, we've encouraged extra reading. We've, um, I've allowed them to, um, when we get done partner reading, I'm like, go back, reread any of the stories that we've already read silently, getting ready for third grade, because silent reading isn't a, a huge um, expectation in second grade, but we want to start laying that foundation for third grade and fourth grade and fifth grade. Um, I've got tons of chapter books. My kids, based off of our knowledge units, which I know we're not talking about, but they, they seek out books in the library constantly about the things that we're learning in knowledge. Um, and so uh, they just, any information, they're my kind of kids that, I mean, I can throw pretty much anything at them. Sometimes there's um, at take home activities in the um, workbook. There's also pausing point worksheets at the end that we don't always get to, but they're great for my high kids because I can say, hey, pick one. You know, pick whatever one you want, because I know they can do it independently and they're, um, they are uh, able to do that and pick further their learning. So there's lots of opportunities in that workbook and throughout the program to keep them moving. Yeah, and I think as, a, as an administrative focus, it has been in the past, we've talked about choosing high quality uh, curriculums so that we're kind of at the point where we know what our kids need to know. We know if they know it. And we're getting to have those conversations about what do we do with the kids who do know it? And so we're, we're having more conversations about how to extend their learning instead of all the focus being on 
how do we intervene here on our kids that don't know? And yeah. one of the things I really loved is, um, particularly last year, I had really strong readers. So I had a bigger group of kids who mm -hmm. already knew it. Um, but there was more, um, it, it went deeper with the reading. Mm -hmm. I had kids who could read, they could read like, like the wind. Oh, yeah. um, but if I asked them inferential questions, like how do you know the character was feeling that way? Or kids really struggled with who were good readers had never been asked to go back in the text and show me the illustration where they got that information or the, the pair, the specific paragraph, like, how do you know they were feeling that way? Or how do you know they were thinking that? Um, and it was almost as if like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I read it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> and, and so um, some of that extension is even built into the curriculum and it, it isn't me or another teacher dreaming it up. Um, it's actually in yeah. the curriculum. I would also say to um, past reading programs that we've done where we read and my kids who are really good readers, they would get bored with the stories or they're like, eh. These readers that we read in second grade, my kids absolutely love. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. if they're the high flyers, the middle of the road, or the struggling readers. They love to read about Kim and Kurt and their adventures in New York City because in little New Glarus, Wisconsin, we don't have skyscrapers or subways. So they learn also. They love Sir Gus. They are absolutely experts about the War of 1812 right now. You could ask them anything, and they could probably tell you the first four presidents of the United States and what how hard it was for James Madison to make his you know, decision. And they're all engaged no matter where they're at. And I think that has a lot to do with high quality materials and high quality readers. You talked about the cat bandit. I've got kids reading chapter books right now, but if I pulled the cat bandit out, they would pick they that it. over anything else because they love the stories. Mm -hmm. They absolutely love them. And there's they, something to be said for all of them being in the same reader. Yeah. They all started in cat bandit and they are all in the war of 1812 now. And I will say, I think it uh, more than anything, it's helped my kids who struggle because they are still with their peers. Mm -hmm. They're still learning, but they aren't singled out and I'm not handing them this phonics book at level A. They are reading second grade materials. Obviously, I'm the program's differentiating for them. I'm differentiating for them, but they get to be with their peers. And we all get to experience those great stories together. And it's not just about reading them. It's being able to read them, read them with a partner, read them with expression, being able to answer questions about them, but then having a conversation. When we all read a good book, just being able to talk about it and you'll hear their conversations. They'll be on the playground and one kid is Sir Gus and the other one is King Alfred and they're playing you know, on the, the playground. Or I'll have a parent call me and be like, man, I had to Google the War of 1812 last night because my kid had all these questions about it. Mm -hmm. And so it really doesn't matter where they're at. The, the material and the readers keep them all engaged. And I haven't had any students who are like, oh, we're going to read again. I already know how to read this. No, they're there right there with their classmates, no matter what. It's huge that they see themselves as readers. Yeah. Those kids who maybe have never seen them thought of themselves as readers before. They're like, well, that, that kid is in this book and that kid's in this book. And they look around and they see that they genuinely see themselves as readers. And that's huge. I would also say, I'm sorry, I would also say for my high flying kids, I also partner them with a struggling student and they get to kind of take that role on as a mentor, as a role model for reading. We talk about how you help people when they read, how you're a good partner. And it is really good for some of my kids to be put into that leadership role. It's powerful. Yep. And yet they're still doing the same thing as all the rest of the kids. And so I wanted to add one thing, Megan, because I see some things coming in the chat. I try not, I'm, I'm trying to watch the chat. I'm trying to see questions. You're hitting so many of the things that are coming up. We do have some really specific questions, but one thing that just came up about with the science and the social studies, I just want to clarify that you are talking about skills only. You are not talking because I think people are, we did, we talked about that last week, the integration of all of that. That's what's so great about these readers. They are learning about topics and content. Like you said, the subway, New York's, they're learning about that through decodable text. And, and yeah. lots of times that really escapes people because the decodable texts of the past that many people are familiar with do, do not have those stories and themes and characters and all of that. So I'm so excited that you shared that. And I just wanted to clarify that for folks that were Ask so, because we're getting some questions more on a little bit of the knowledge strand that um, is not what we're talking about right now. That's yeah. really important too. And that was a big focus when we were choosing 
a new curriculum. Um, our past curriculum really did a good job of teaching our kids to read, but it didn't make them readers. And there was no, um, no way to connect it to real life. These were kind of obscure, random, Weird. specific, only to second grade reader. It wasn't like you would go home and have a conversation with your parents or hear it referenced like on the new, you, you, there weren't any connections being made yeah. to what was happening in the classroom and what was happening out in the world. Um, and our readers definitely make those connections and parents can have a conversation with their kids about what they read. They reference it um, in other places in their day and in their life. And that was really missing from our previous curriculum. So, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like when we, when we learned about the sisters that, that swam together, like we'll pull up Michael Phelps and we're watching him doing his Olympic swimming because our kids in New Glarus don't have a lot of context on what it is to be part of a swim team. So we'll show that. Or, or you know, we had four sisters, three yeah. sisters who went to state. So we had them come and talk. talk. Amen. Yeah. So, I mean, there, <laughs> there's a lot those stories are stories that those kids can read, but they can relate to those stories. And um, like, they just, if you ask any of our kids, they love Sir Gus, total made up story, but they just love how he can flop through life and become this amazing knight. And they just love it. And every time I would read, like, we would read, oh, 11 knights showed up and they're like, oh, they're supposed to be 12. You know, who's not there. You know I mean? They just, they're loving all those stories that we read. And I get excited. I'm like, oh, yeah, I get to show them Sir Gus now, you know, like, just check out the cover. Don't open it yet. And they just, they get so excited about the next book. And to your point, they think they're reading a chapter book. Yeah. Because yeah. of the way they're set up. So they're in second grade going, chapter one? We're reading chapter one of Cat Band? I'm like, yep, it's a chapter book. Or like, we're taking notes right now and skills on the War of 1812. I'm like, they do this in college, boys and girls. We're going to do this in second grade, you know? And they're like, what? And I'm like, yep, we can do this. This is easy, you know? And so those are all things that are happening during our skills time. You know what? I am so glad you touched on that with uh, there. First of all, as a CKLA teacher, I had never had the experience of telling a child like, no, you can't keep reading. We're going to read that chapter tomorrow. And that was a real thing. That was like the real problem, you know, like it was like, can we keep reading and going on? Cause they well, love it so much. Um, one thing uh, that I enjoy asking educators, CKLA educators um, is, you know, you guys talked about coming from other programs, coming from, you know, being a reading recovery teacher. And we have so many participants who often ask whether it be administrators or teachers um, at their school, who were like, look, we understand the value of, of science-based reading instruction. However, not everyone's on board. And so I'm asking this question, it's kind of a, a multi-layered uh, question. When thinking back to your initial experience with CKLA and just the foundational skill strand, obviously that was a shift for you guys. And so I have worked with teachers who have made that shift. They see results. They're so excited to share the results but they still have this heart connection to older ways or previous ways of teaching. And so they're almost like torn. And when I talk about that, I, I guess, or when I'm asking this, I wanna know if you guys had any kind of, were you torn between, hey, I used to do this. And, and if I moved to CKLA and I'm seeing these results, does that mean that I haven't been doing the right thing? And all of those questions, right? You're laughing because it's a real thought. Mm -hmm. um, but also uh, thinking about, um, you know, that feeling and also what advice do you have for other teachers like yourself who are really, you know, who, who are wanting to implement explicit systematic foundational skills instruction through using the skill strand, but are hesitant to do so? What advice do you have? Well, I think we come from a district that we, we take a little bit of the guilt away. We did what we thought was right at the time, right? And then, no harm. <laughs> right? You know, we thought we were doing the, you know, we were all in in our reading curriculum. We were seeing some results, but there were also conversations of, there were holes in it. And we were all well aware of what those holes were because we were having those conversations. I guess what I would say to another teacher that's struggling with making the change, CKLA is good for kids and I'm willing to do whatever's good for kids. And if CKLA shows me the results that I need for my kids, then I'm all on board because I'm all about what's best for kids. And if that's what's best for kids, then that's what I'll do. And will it be a lot of work the first year? Yep, absolutely. Just like anything else, but it will pay off and it's worth the work, I think anyways. Yes. 
Um, and we had many, com it kind of came about organically too. It came more, I feel like a lot of times when we get a new curriculum, it comes from, or in the past, it came from administrative down. And this time it really felt organic that we, it was as a staff and as teachers, you know, kindergarten, first, second, that were teaching kids to read. We were like, mm, this doesn't feel like teaching a bad curriculum is as much work as teaching a really good one. Yeah. Uh, it's the same amount of time, sometimes more. Um, so you might as well um, put your teach work in. really good curriculum. And that's kind of where we were at. We were like, mm, this was good. How do we go from good to great? Um, and that was a lot of the conversations we had as a staff. Um, I think also our ability to pilot yeah. um, each person. There was one person at each grade level. I know that's tricky if you don't have um, the resources or the personnel to do that. Um, but we really, I mean, we dove right in and I taught it and my colleagues respected my opinions of CKLA. They, you know, we had conversations about it. Um, and I just felt yeah. like the buy-in was there um, and a little bit like, oh my gosh, yeah. Teaching is hard. Yeah. You might as well teach really good curriculum. And I guess as far as I go, we have a, a really strong principal and strong administrator. And so I also very much value her opinion and how she spoke about it. And so that helped me a lot. I would also say there were many, many lessons in our previous curriculum where I was like, oh man, I got to teach this again today. I hate this story. I never get the questions right. I never feel I'm excited to teach skills every day. I'm excited to teach knowledge every day, even after three years. Um, I just feel like it gets better every year because I get better at it. And the kids are coming up with more um, knowledge because they've had kindergarten and first grade skills. Um, and it's just been, I look forward to teaching it every day where I didn't feel that way in our old curriculum. It felt much harder to get through the day or be more excited about doing it. And I don't feel that way with CKLA. Mm -hmm. Like I'm excited to teach it every day. And I can totally relate. And if you're a CKLA educator on the call, I'm sure you feel the same way. And I cannot thank you guys. I know Karen feels the same way. Your passion that you brought to this conversation is uh, something that I l would love to bottle up and share with <laughs> everyone uh, around the world. Um, but you talked about buy-in and it really goes back to wanting to learn more about, hey, why is science-based reading instruction necessary, right? And so if you guys are on the call and you want to learn more about Amplify CKLA and the foundational skill strand, you can visit amplify.com backslash CKLA, uh, where you can actually, um, you know, be in touch with someone from Amplify to give you more information and also kind of get an overview. But as you guys saw on the call today, these teachers right here can attest to it. They've been in the trenches, they've experienced the hard work, the good, the bad, the ugly, and it's always best to hear from educators. And next week we have an entire panel uh, with administrators and teachers where we're gonna further this conversation about science-based instruction and making or bringing the science of reading to your classroom through using Amplify CKLA high quality instructional materials. Um, we're excited about that. Megan, I just have to interrupt you. I have to say these ladies have set the bar pretty high though. <laughs> so we've got four folks next week. I'm excited and I know they're gonna be phenomenal as well, but you've set the bar high and I just want Sorry. to <laughs> in the chat. I hope you're reading the chat because people are really impressed and they say your students are lucky to have you oh. and 100% agree. And I'm sure we would find that out by talking to them as well. <laughs> well, we're lucky to have them and we're lucky to be in the district that we are. I'm very thankful. So thank yes. you for having us. We Shout actually have to go Jill. get them. Shout kids. Out to Jill. We're, we're still teaching, so we gotta go get the kids. <laughs> Yes, you guys have a great afternoon and thank you so much for your commitment and participation. And as you mentioned, Karen, they have set the bar really high. Uh, we may just be reaching out to you guys later uh, just to chat, just to further the conversation. But Absolutely. also, we want anytime. To, yes, uh, for sure. Have a good one, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one thing we do want to make sure we use this opportunity to do is invite you to Reading Reimagine, which is our virtual summit uh, on Thursday. Uh, you can actually, we're going to be diving into personalized learning that's grounded in, in science. Um, we have guest speakers, Maria Murray from uh, the Reading League and also Tracy Whedon um, from Newhouse Education Center. So lots of great professional learning uh, to come. If you can't join us live, sign up, you'll receive the recording. 
and definitely come to our sign up and in in uh, receive the podcast. Our our fearless leader Susan Lambert has guest after guest. They get better and better each time she interviews. And so I, I can't if if you're looking for more and wanting to learn more, the Science of Reading podcast, which is not about CKLA or uh, Amplify. Uh, curriculum. It's about the science of reading. So tune in for that as well. Yes, absolutely. And also join our Facebook page. We know we have gone over time today and there are still questions in the Q&A box that have not been answered. Um, we want to make sure that we're going to reach out to you guys and get those questions answered. But what a great session. Uh, what a great conversation. You guys are inspiring that you were committed to learning um, and, and doing what's best for your kiddos. And, and Karen, I don't know if you want to add to that, but thank you. Thanks yeah. for coming. Well, and thank you. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, attendees. We really appreciate it. And we do apologize that we didn't get to every question. Some of them were so specific. It was a little bit more challenging to answer live, but we definitely want to provide you with answers. So please reach out. Megan shared that learning more about CKLA. And we, we definitely, we, we'd love to come chat with you um, at your school, uh, pre preferably at your school, not, not via a Zoom webinar. Uh, so have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you so much. We look forward to the, you joining us next week for the panel. Yeah, and you know what? Madigan actually put the panel link, uh, the, the registration for that webinar in the chat. We can't wait to see you guys on the 18th and hopefully on the 13th as well. That's right. Thank you we'll guys. You. Have a great afternoon. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.